I'm Kay Bess, and this is The Beehive. Women in voiceover, the voices of the fairer sex that keep the wheels of commerce and creativity moving in this country. Voices you hear every day, but names you likely don't know until now. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Beehive. Uh, happy Saturday, I'm going to say. And I realize you may not be listening to this on a Saturday, but we recorded on a Saturday and uh, uh, my guest and I shared a little bit of wine. <laughs> That's always how you, how you can tell that uh, that the show uh, was uh, was recorded on a weekend or perhaps just an evening. But in this case, uh, this was a late afternoon Saturday. So I bid you a happy Saturday. Oh, did I score with this guest. Amanda Wyatt uh, is in studio today with me. Amanda is one of the foremost uh, video game directors and casting directors in the biz. I'm going to let her tell you all the you know major titles that that she has uh, cast and directed, and and I will tell you I I love her for many reasons, not the least of which is that she cast me in my very first two uh, video games. One was a small role in uh, Skylanders Superchargers, where I got to play. Queen Cumulus, which was a, just a fun, tiny little bit. And uh, and then she took a bigger leap with me, casting me in Agents of Mayhem as Persephone Brimstone, which was uh, quite a large role. Um, oh, my gosh. It was just two years of, of the best fun ever uh, working with Amanda. And uh, so but she has directed and cast big titles big, big titles. And she's just a fantastic human being. And she's very good at what she does. She's got great ears. She has a great sensibility about actors. She loves actors. And, you know, an actor can ask for nothing more than to have someone on the other side of the glass who loves and respects your work. It's just a fantastic thing. So I am so pleased to share with you Amanda Wyatt. Thank you for joining us in the Beehive today, Amanda. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Clink. So, uh, Amanda, how did you, I always start with the, you know, sort of the quintessential, how did you get into what you do now? And you've been, you've been directing for 13 years. Is that yes. right? Yeah. Yes. I've been casting and directing for 13 years. And is it exclusively video games? Or you, do you do animation as well? Is Or is it that sort of all one one thing. Right. I would say about 95 to almost 97% of my work <laughs> is uh, is video games. Okay. I'd love to branch out into animation, but they really are, in terms of the voice talent, folks like yourself, one and the same, you know? Yeah. Um, you sort of uh, span both right. sectors. Although it's interesting. There's, there's some there's separation there yeah, for, there for is. sure. There yeah. Is, yeah, there is. Client-wise, it's a totally different, you know, I've got yeah. this basket over here and this basket over here. Yeah. So, yeah, it's something that is very interesting to me to kind of um, maybe progress into yeah. eventually. Yeah. But honestly, I have so much fun doing video games and I just am not ready to hop off that train yeah. quite yet yeah. fully. So how does one become a director of video games, of, of the voice work in video games? Good question. Okay, I can only tell you how I <laughs> <laughs> how I got there. Uh, I Before I became a voice director, I was working at a company that's uh, no longer around called Sound Deluxe. It was a very okay. big sound company for films, yes. TV, yes. Uh, video games, you name it. So I was working there in their video games department, running their voiceover department for quite some time. I started as a coordinator and then a producer mm -hmm. and then and then uh, as video game, voiceover in video game, video games uh, started to uh, become, you know, um, bigger and bigger. And we wanted, you know, celebrity talent and, and just professional voice talent yes, in general right. people should remember that voiceover and video games started 
with developers lending their voice to the role. So this was way back in, I want to say, 1998 or 99, I'm aging myself, that I was at Sound Deluxe in that capacity. So I really know the producerial side of what goes on with Mm -hmm. voiceover and video games. And I ran that department for five or six years. I can't remember. And then when I went to go and have my twin girls, <laughs> <laughs> I realized I couldn't go back to that. Yeah. Um, not not only because it was just, you know, an all-encompassing job that I, I couldn't do at the moment with twin daughters, but also that it didn't really satisfy a creative side of yeah. me, that it really was just kind of ticking off that producerial side of me. Yeah. So um, – how I got into it was I have a mentor by the name of Chris Zimmerman, who I'm sure oh, a lot awesome. of you people uh, hearing this know. Yeah. Uh, so I had been working with Chris for quite some time because she was a director that we hired at Sound Deluxe. Yeah. And we had become close friends. And I got up the nerve to call her up one day, and I can still envision myself in my backyard in Pasadena saying, I really want to do what you do. Can you mentor me? Uh, and it was like, I think awesome. I was like <gasps> sweating, going, yeah, yeah. well, all she can do is say no. That's all she can do. And I happened to hit her at a time where her career was really amazingly solid. She was doing, you know, Chris's yeah, oh, uh, yeah. animation. Exactly. Video. I, yeah. I mean, v- video games, you name it, she does it. Yeah. So I just hit her at a time where she could use some help. And so I started working with Chris and actually Gordon Hunt, great Gordon Hunt. Um, I would cast games for them, help them. And then in in return, I got to sit in the booth and shadow oh, both of them. Wow. So it was really neat. And so I did that for about a year, I want to say, uh, largely under the umbrella of Sound Deluxe because uh-huh. I had a family there already. Sure. So that, uh, that sort of favor was afforded to me. And I think it was about a year later that they said, okay, she's ready. And off I went and did my first game. And then so on and so on. And wow, so on. that's so, amazing. Yeah, I always tell kids, you know, whenever I go talk at my alma mater, my high school, don't ever be afraid to ask for a mentor, to seek a mentor. Yeah. Because honestly, like, I will cry right now. <laughs> I know, I know. I can cry. Chris Zimmerman changed my life. Yeah. For the better. Yeah. I'll never forget her. Yeah. So I, yeah. I just, I'll never forget what she did for me. And it being a woman was super significant in my yeah. life. We're still very close. Yeah. So it was just, yeah, it was awesome. I think that too, when you, you've got babies at home and I you're know. kind of trying to refashion your life that includes these new humans yeah. that you are utterly responsible for yeah. and who have become primary. I mean, before you have a kid, your your work can very much be primary. Right. But, it, I, you know, it right. just there's this huge shift. Yeah. Oh, just all a bets monster are off. Shift. All bets point. are off. They are. Yeah. And you're really yeah. juggling and you're not sure what you can do and what you can't do. And yeah. yeah, it was really lovely to have her support in transitioning to that. And we still support each other. We still call each other and try to give each other jobs. And when we find a new actor, we call each other, oh, have you worked with so-and-so? Yeah. No. Okay. You know. So. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, in truth, it's such a small network of people, uh-huh. really. Mm-hmm. You know, even the people who do the work and the, and, but the casting folks, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, you know, it really is kind of a little family. It is. It is. I just, I worked for Chris for the first time, I want to say like, a year and a half ago, two years ago. Okay. Yeah. Which was really, that was a milestone for me too. I mean, yeah. I, I can't fathom that it was m- memorable to her. It was like one session, but it was like, oh, I find, you know, it's like, I yeah. finally get to. So, yeah. Um, but she certainly is, um, she certainly is legendary. Legendary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that so great. great at what she does. And yeah. Yeah. I'm just utterly thankful. And I keep saying, you know, I can't quit this job until I've done for someone else what yes. she did for me. Yeah. But it's got to be the right person. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, sure. You know, I'm sure she got hit up by a bunch of people. Yeah. Um, and maybe she mentored other people. I'm not sure. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But that's that's great. That's yeah. how it works. That's how you pay it forward, right? Yeah. That is fantastic. I hope too. So yeah. What's your favorite part about your job? 
Oh, goodness. Um, The people. I just, on both sides of the glass. Yeah. So I obviously love my actors. Yeah. Um, I love that you... Um, that you use a possessive in that, like that they're my yours. actors. Yeah. I just think that's great. <laughs> I, well, I do. It's very, you know, because I want to see you guys, you know, progress. I do. Yeah. There is a lot of behind the scenes that you guys aren't aware of. Of, oh, well, you're looking for this person. Oh, well, then there's this person over here. And, you know, have you heard of this guy? He's new to town. He's from Canada. And yeah. there's a lot of that that. I'm not sure actors are aware of. Yeah. So I guess that's why I call them my actors. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, the actors are amazing. And then I always say, I don't know if you've ever heard me use this phrase, but I say that I work in Hollywood light mm -hmm. <laughs> um, by way of the people on the side of the glass with me, the gamers, mm -hmm. the yes. game devs. Yeah. You know, while we very much are working with Hollywood talent, sometimes – a-list celebrity talent. Yeah. People on the client side are so down to earth. These are guys and girls, women mm -hmm. and yeah. men now, that quite honestly dreamed of doing this job from the time they first got their first Atari. And now they're doing it. And it's so, uh, they're so casual. There's little to no air about any of them. Right, yeah. You know, yeah. it's just really nice. Now, I was an actor before I became, you know, a director or I had a stint in acting also. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I was definitely exposed to what Hollywood was like. Sure. And yeah. I don't know that I could do that mm -hmm. day in and day out. Mm -hmm. um, nothing bad about it. It's just I don't know that I could have been around some of that yeah. those personalities never do i deal with that right with my clientele yeah they're just awesome they become my friends and uh and so yeah i'd say that's my most favorite part you know larissa job. gallagher mm -hmm. and i went with jeff and larry uh-huh to take dutch to dinner Aww. on his birthday Aww. i mean because we experienced that same thing it's a little bit like what voice acting is like in the Hollywood scheme of things. Right. Because, you know, I had my stint at on camera and right. I couldn't bear it. Right. For so many reasons. It's a thing. Yeah. I mean, it's, and I, I, for me, I was like, I don't want, I don't like, I don't like being judged by what I look like. Right. Right. And that kind of pressure was too much for me. So voiceover feel, feels, it's very different. It's sort of an oddball group of people mm -hmm. who do this thing. Mm -hmm. And we're very much a part of acting. I mean, that's our union and mm -hmm. all of that. But it's sort of without all the other stuff. It's, yeah. Without so, all the egos. Yeah. Without all of the yeah. drama. And there are a couple egos. And there's a little drama. But boy, does it stand out like a sore thumb. Oh, yeah. I mean, if if I were to give a voice actor a tip, <laughs> please <laughs> wanting to get into voiceover, <laughs> yeah, for video games specifically, I would say don't be a jerk, because yeah. if you're a jerk, you will stand out, because there are so few of them. Exactly. Honest to God, yeah, like three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really and so to know that I get to drive into work every day and go, okay, well, they're going to, you know, maybe if I'm having an off morning, if I've, you know, yeah. the kids have taken a while, everybody's late and, yeah. you know, traffic, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I just know that I've got a group of guys, maybe a couple women behind me here, yeah. some great engineers that have become my my family, yeah. you know, yeah. um, because we, you know, in, in terms of voiceover for video games, there's only a select group of studios who really yes. sort of specialize in that. So the engineers yeah. I know, the clients are great. And then I've got this amazingly talented actor who is just not going to come with this ego and these demands. And yeah. it's just a really pleasant environment to yeah. be in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then to help carve the story, you know, and make sense of what's on the page yeah. is... It's huge. Yeah, magical. Actually, yeah. I love yeah. it. I love it. And then to see it all come to fruition in a in a you know I know in a final. I know you cast me in my first video game, which, which was, was Skylanders. That was your first yeah. video game. Well, I guess should I take it back because I I think I did, I think I did the voice of a of a 
of a computer in dead space in oh. like 2008. Well, that's not a little game. That's I know, but game. I had no <laughs> idea what it was. Yeah. I mean, in 2008, and in 2008, I was like, what is, what is this? You know, I just was clueless yeah. as a commercial promo girl, and, mm-hmm. and I wasn't, you know, I was doing the voice of a computer. Mm-hmm. So I don't even think about that as being my first. Yeah. I don't remember who the director was. I didn't, it yeah. wasn't anything I felt like I was really directed at. Right. Because I wasn't right. doing any, I was just a computer voice. Right. I mean, I was like, so, uh, so I think of Skylanders as being sort of the first game where I, had to do something like create a little character as little as she was, but um, can we say and then her be, name? Yes, it's Queen Cumulus. I loved Queen Cumulus. <laughs> I have a very funny but not clean joke about the Queen Cumulus. You can auditions. say that joke. That's totally fine. You know the joke. Yeah, right. I do know the joke. The Queen, the Queen Cumulus. Joke. Yeah, I mean nobody pronounced. <laughs> that's why I was booked for that because I, I was the only one who said her name right. Like Cumulus, like the cloud. She was floating on a cloud. On as a, a cloud, of fact, yes. on the sides. Yeah, like her lower half Attention. is a cloud. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. So it's, it's very important to uh, read, note to actors. Yes. Yeah. Read your signs. Read your do signs. a little homework. Homework. What does that word mean? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, <laughs> but you were exactly. You were great in that. You were great in that. Oh, well, God. it felt like a really big victory because uh, because it was you know if because it it felt to me like a character mm-hmm. you know like I like something that right and it's a voice that I had done with my husband and daughter for years right years and they would always say to me why don't you do animation I'm like oh I don't know. Mm-hmm. so and they do say that you know characters the the characters that you that, that are old, you know, and kind of in you. I And I felt like she was just in me for having, for so many years. Yeah. So she was e- easy to sort of flush out, you right. know. So right. anyway, right. that's not the story I wanted to tell. But, but anyway. But you bring up a good point about the character you created because a lot of times people actually quite recently have had a couple of um, – actors who come from a different discipline, maybe on camera or theater mm-hmm. or whatever, yeah. they'll come in and they'll say, oh, you know, well, first and foremost, I'm an actor and I've just, I kind of stumbled into this voiceover thing. And I'm like, voiceover is acting. Right. First and foremost, it is acting. Yeah. And so whenever someone approaches me with, oh, my cousin's cousin has a great voice, it's like, okay, have they taken an acting class? Yeah. Because... You really do need to create that character in order to land the audition yeah. and then be able to to follow a story arc with video games that is going to come at you from all different angles. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to be privy to a whole lot of information. Right. So you're going to really have to trust your director. Yes. Because it, it is working in a vacuum. It's working in a vacuum for me yeah. even. Yeah. And you do have to be... I think really agile and really open. You do. And willing. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to play and you have to trust. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's sometimes where I'm sitting down going, I don't know a lot about this. (laughs) Because it's not written yet. Yeah. It's not there yet. Or I haven't been been a privy to it because it's under NDA and and tight wraps and all of that. So um, you have to kind of just trust that whatever we're getting and we're saying is good is actually going to work, yeah. you know? And yeah. I also, and then, and then there's trust, I think, that, uh, you know, I, I need to have with the people behind me, my uh, my clients that like, are we getting it? Yeah, we're getting it. We got it. No, it's really good. Okay. Because I haven't seen any animations, no animatics, no storyboards, no nothing Wow. for the most part. It's interesting. There's a whole lot of uh, there's a whole lot of trust in yeah. making a video game. Yeah, yeah. You really have to trust the skill of your director, of your engineer, of your right cast, and right, right, right. So when it's what what can I? Well, this is hard. I mean, it's like asking you to choose your your favorite child. I mean, when you have mm-hmm. several children, my mm-hmm. favorite child is Esther. Mm-hmm. That's not no problem mm-hmm. for me to say mm-hmm. that. But well, I have three. That would be I, tough. Exa- exactly. So, do you have a favorite game that you've worked on? I do. I would say that Assassin's Creed Two with the legendary Ezio Auditore, voiced by Roger Craig Smith, uh, is my favorite. 
by far. Anything in particular that made it your favorite or was something just magical about it? Or? Um, the process was amazing. The process has never been repeated. I was just talking to someone about this the other day that was interviewing me for a job. It was the one and only video game I got handed the entire script. Wow. Cinematics, in-game, you name it, Roger and I had it. We had, and this was before we used, you know how you guys um, use scripts on screen now. Yes, right. Okay, this was before, before that. Before that. Right, so we had a teleprompter girl, but uh, we had reams. I mean, we wow. each had a Brazilian rainforest in front of us wow. of paper. Yeah. We had all in-game lines, all cinematic lines, so we really could grasp the arc that Ezio was story. going to take yeah. and, and and of the entire story. It was amazing. And that process has never been afforded to me yeah. to date. Yeah. Um, again, for various reasons, mainly because just the way in which video games are made, I think, are, is incredibly different now. But I was working with a phenomenal writer, Corey May, who was just fantastic. And the creative director, Patrice de Soleil, I probably just butchered his name, and I'm sorry, Patrice, if you heard me, <laughs> I love you. Uh, he was just, it was so all-encompassing, and they really trusted me, and they really trusted Roger to bring this character to life. Um, it was just a magical, magical year and a half, almost two, I want to yeah, say, that we yeah. worked on this. And then it came out and to rave reviews, I say in terms of, you know, and don't kill me fans, but in terms of uh, the hero character within the Assassin's Creed franchise, Ezio is everyone's favorite yeah. still to yeah. this day. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not a hard question for me. That's I love great. all the others, though. Thank you for the work, people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes something just stands out. And, it was just and special. As, yeah. It was just special. Yeah. yeah. And what does your day look like? I mean, you have ki you have kids. You have three kids. I have three kids, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, what's that like? Being a mom, being a working person, being a freelance working person. Oh, you very... What's what's your what's your day like? Right. Is there a typical day, or is it like actor, like no such thing? <laughs> I have I have very typical days. Yeah, unlike you guys. Yeah. Yes, I have very typical <laughs> days. I'm normally booked out well in advance okay you know every now and then people will get me you know hey can you do this thing real quick but i'm pretty i, I can sort of sleep my year okay knock on wood yeah that's great um so yeah i take on a you know two to three pretty large projects a year and then i'll fill in with other small projects okay and that's about all one director can do yeah so my typical days i wake up oh my gosh i Schlep the girls to school, um, you know, kiss my little boy goodbye, and daddy takes him to school, and then drive to one of the studios, you know, either Warner Brothers or Formosa or Side or Sony. And I do a, like you guys, I do a nine to one and then a two to six yeah. uh, for the most part. Yeah. And, uh, and then what I do at home when I get home is, uh, you know, after I've made the dinner and done the homework and put the kids to bed and blah. Do you still use, uh, Blue Apron? You still I still use that? Blue Apron, thank you. I do not all the time, <laughs> yeah, but, but I do. Sometimes. I do. It's great. I didn't mean to interrupt you. So after no, you've made the dinner and put the kids to bed. After I've done all of that, then typically I'll sit down and read through scripts for the next day, unless okay. it's something that I've read ahead of time because everybody's scripts are similar or something like that. But yeah. typically there's a fair amount of reading I have to do at night, if not uh, casting for another project that I'll do at night because you guys will submit. And then obviously I can't listen to that stuff while I'm recording. Right. So right. I'll go through and do casting either at night or on the weekends when my brain's a little bit more fresh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's day in and day out. Um you know, and I'm I I wouldn't say I work every day of the month, but close, close to, to it. it. Yeah. yeah, you know, the video game industry is cyclical in terms of their development cycle. So I always know. Uh, well, like you guys during the winter, the winter is always slow because I don't think there is an actor who's from LA. 
and y'all leave. <laughs> so it's impossible to book anybody because everybody's hilarious. back home. I am going to just remember that. And I'm going to be in town. And you'll be in town yeah. because you'll be the only one. <laughs> right. Because come the 17th of December, we're That's at a standstill yeah. because there are no actors here. Yeah. So, so um, funny. Yeah, I'll slow down then. I also slow down a little bit in the fall because video games – Typically release, release in the fall yeah. before the Christmas sales. Right. So, yeah, you know, I, I do have moments of respite. And that helps me to, mm-hmm. you know, in, in my years of doing this, to be aware of that for when I do get to the spring and the summer. And it's like coming at me, you onslaught, know, 100 yeah. miles an hour. What's the casting process like for you in terms of like, well, I guess, what what should I say? Are there things that make you a little nutty about about submissions that you get that or what is it that makes you stop here i'm asking you three questions in one what or what is it that makes you stop and listen to someone and go that's interesting i want to consider this hmm that's a good question um i probably have if the sides are written well Mm -hmm. and i really do press my clients to give me well thought out and scripts, complete yeah. sides and audition scripts, yeah, uh, with a pictorial reference mm-hmm. and whatnot. It's only going to provide yes. a better audition, you know. Um, so I probably have a preconceived idea of what this is going to sound like. Mm-hmm. And having done this for as many mm-hmm. years as I have, I know quite a few of you. Mm-hmm. Um, and even if I don't know you, you've crossed my desk sure. more than one time to where yes. I'll know, oh, so-and-so is going to deliver something like this. Um, so it, it really is sort of, um, I'd say it's an organic match, something that just goes, bing, that's interesting. That's kind of yeah. what I was hearing in my head. Okay. Um, it's interesting to me, too, that when sides are complete with this pictorial reference and a well-written bio, not too much, but, you know, something for you guys to grasp yeah. onto. Nine times out of ten, you all sound the same because you've done your homework. Right. They've done their homework. And it really is just finding that that one gem. When I get submissions back that are just all over the place, that's not the actor's problem. That's the side's problem. You know? Yes. It doesn't clearly identify what we're looking for. Right. Because if it does, the level of talent that I work with and the agencies I work with, it's frustrating to me. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, I'd get a, I'll get 100 takes back for one character and darn near 50 of them are like, oh, okay, yeah, those are all really good. Okay, let's take a listen again, you know? Yeah. Um. So, yeah. There is two... There is a certain amount of weight that I put on um, actors who I don't want to say necessarily I know, Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, who have done quite a few games in or, you know, who've worked in this genre. Yes. Um, Because at the end of the day, if the projects cast well, um, then directing it is going to be easy, right? And it's going to be fun. And we're all going to be able to have a good time and and not just worry about pulling a performance out right. because that's not all there is to worry about. I mean, as you know, doing this, there's hundreds of lines in a four-hour block of time that we have to get through. Yeah. And the director, P.S. everybody, is the timekeeper in the booth as well. Yeah. And we've signed up to doing a certain amount of lines in a four-hour block of time. And if we don't, we get known as the director who eh, talks too much. And you might not can't quite get it all done. Right, can't quite yeah. get it all done. So there's that effort of my job. So when I get to cast, I feel so much better knowing, like, okay, I know who I'm getting. You know, even if I don't know them, but I've, you know, they've auditioned several times, and wow, now sure. this person's going to come in for me, and I'm sure they're going to knock it out of the park. There's just an ease in the room that yeah. everything's going to go smoothly. Yeah. So yeah. I hope that answers your question. It, it does. Good. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um. Do you ever direct games that you don't cast? Mm-hmm. What's that like? Is that that must be hard? It's hard. It can be hard. Um, I really try and embed myself in the selection process if I can, mm-hmm. but sometimes I'm not afforded that. Um, simply because, and I always just state to the developer, 
I'm the person stuck with the person behind the other glass. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So if I think that it's a stretch, well, there could be two two things. It could be that that person might not be right for the role, or it could be that I don't understand the role. And so now I need to sit down and get a better understanding of, as to why they selected that person. Right. Because ultimately, before I sit behind the glass with you guys, I've had meetings with them to get in their heads. Right about what they want, you know? So if if it's a miss because there's been another casting director involved and, you know, and things have progressed and, ta-da, here's your cast, and I don't understand it, there could be various reasons why, I guess. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it didn't even, until you were talking about casting and then directing and, you know, and I, and I know those are often separate things. And so... Yeah, uh, in all other genres of the... Hollywood industry, they are. They are, yeah. They very much are. It's really video games is the only crossover. I, I don't know why it is that it started that way. I remember when we hired Chris Zimmerman for the first time back at Sound Deluxe, we said, well, do you cast? Yeah, I'd cast too. Okay. So you'll cast and direct? Yeah. So, I mean, maybe it was back in the day when we all were first doing this that we just that kind of, yeah, we did both and it sort of stuck. Yeah. But more and more they are using, because you're seeing a lot more <clears throat> on-camera talent come into voiceover for video games, they are using outside casting directors, right. casting directors that specialize in film and TV. So what's that like? My somewhat limited experience in doing games there seems to be a through line however that it that it feels very much like black box theater to me that the motion capture and performance capture uh and you know even when you're doing just voice work Uh it's slightly more theatrical so what is it like to have people come in who come from film and television which is quite i mean you know when your face is on a giant screen if you lift your eyebrow you know that's it invokes a, a feeling. It, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you don't have that. Right. Uh, you're not afforded that when you're obviously recording. Right. And, you know, what, what's that experience like for you? Do you have to pull harder at performances or? Um, I wouldn't say in general that I've had to pull harder at performances because the people I've worked with have been pretty amazing. Uh, you know, on, on certain occasions, there have been a... A little bit of a, you know, disconnect in terms of there is, like you mentioned, there is no set. There right. is no opposite actor. That's right. Yeah. There is, you're in a taupe box. Yeah. <laughs> in a taupe fishbowl, you yeah. know. Yeah. So from time to time, there is a little pulling. Um, a lot of times you guys become very familiar with my shorthand, I'll call it. Mm-hmm. Because you understand the mechanics of games and how... The lines are triggered. Mm -hmm. So to kind of educate anyone um, new, be it a celebrity, on camera, theater person even, it really is the the mechanics of it. And, you know, a lot of people, they'll come in, well, what am I replying to? Nothing. You have to. Right. That's your imagination at work. Right. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, Am I in combat? Could be. (laughs) Could not be. Yeah. So what do I do? Cheat the projection. You know, it's yeah. it's it's the I'd like to say it's the mechanics and right. the shorthand that I can use with you guys. And I've adopted the shorthand because there's not a lot of time. Right. And so I'd say the biggest difference with the on camera folks that come in and 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 the celebrities, I joke, you know, some of them will come in, and I had one awesome gentleman uh, who is just a legend look at me one day and said are we gonna go the full four hours (laughs) (laughs) yep we are we're gonna go the full four hours holy cow you know yeah and uh and i looked around and i said y'all he's not used to this right he's used to seeing break everybody takes an hour while we reset you know and lighting and whatever you know and they hang out or go over their or lines or whatever, or, yeah. or regroup. Mm-hmm. And this is just bang, 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 you know? Yeah. So, yeah, that's the biggest difference. Yeah. And I, you know, and it's something that a true professional is, you know, it's always the, the first four-hour session is is always the, okay, let's see how this is going to go. Yeah. Uh, but then 
by the second, third one, they've got it. And yeah. it's, yeah. you know, it, it's just a different type of acting. Yeah. Kind yeah. of. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I've been doing a little, like, I'm, I'm working on a game right now that is, it's my first experience of really seriously vocally stressful work. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. like. Uh, it's amazing that I, you know, have done 10 or 12 games and haven't encountered that yet. Yes. I mean, that's like a miracle, mm -hmm. I think. Um, even even when I was working on Call of Duty, right. I, uh, you know, if I did have any vocally stressful stuff, it was 20 minutes and I was out. I was done. Yeah. So there was never anything like I had to like baby my voice or nurse it back to health or the right. weekend I had to stop speed. This game is like that, you know. Mm. And so that's a really interesting thing. And some of it feels like it's in the, you know, the sort of the care of our voices in, in a certain sense is in the hands of our director mm -hmm. and their mindfulness of what is happening. Yeah. And um, yeah. I'm just curious your take on that in the sense of what do you do if you experience an actor who you sense might be like, OK, this is get, this is like getting to be too much or. Um, yeah. I pull them out <clears throat> of the booth. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that it was obviously a sticking point last year with the strike and everything. Sure, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Although, can I say, just to interrupt you, because, you know, it's yeah. what I do, I have never worked for a director who was anything but careful and considerate. And, I mean, never. Yeah. That was never has never been my experience. Yeah. So yeah. that's the norm to me. Right. You know? And that's great. Yeah. And that's great. There <clears throat> are some out there. I hope that they're not doing it anymore, but yeah. there were some and there are some. And I, I mean, I didn't even get into, I ran a studio called Game On Audio for a while. So I was, I hired directors under Sound Deluxe. I also hired directors under Game On Audio. So I am aware there were directors who didn't do anything about it. And yeah. that's a bummer. So I, I am not one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I know. And it's, and it's, and it's, it's, I'm not asking for sympathy but it is a tricky place to be in because yeah. you guys aren't paying us. Right. The client is paying us. Yeah. So it's a fine line of, you know, are we being <clears throat> too nice? Are we are we being too nice to the actors and, and not respecting what the client wants? I'd say the way I handle it is an upfront conversation. Yeah. You know, nothing goes down in the booth. <laughs> right. Um, I'd say when it is happening to people, nine times out of ten, their director didn't read the script. And if their director read the, read the script and understood the script, they should have called the client. Part of the industry that maybe you guys don't know is we don't get the script until the night ahead of time. Nor yeah, normally. I didn't normally. know that. Yeah. yeah. Day ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, and so then if we're in session, we read it the night before. Yeah. Uh, and so it's a text at 10 o'clock at night. Going, hey guys, you didn't tell me there was 150 screaming battle chatter lines, and this person is booked for a four hour session, and that should be a two hour vocally stressful session. So sorry, this is what we're gonna do. I just don't know. I, not, and I'm speaking about how I work. Yeah. I just I don't know if everybody does diligence. I also know that not everybody is afforded the script. Some directors sit down in the morning right. and the script <clears throat> sitting there, and then they realize, oh, no, this person has way too many uh, lines. So it's a maybe a tense conversation with the client to say, you're actually not going to get what you thought you were going to get today. Right. Because prior to the strike, the vocally stressful allowance was set up before the strike. That was something I was already adhering to. Right. In the very beginning of the industry booming with and and, re, and and using professional voice talent. No. I mean, I remember. Yeah. I remember back in the day yeah. when it, they were just Excel spreadsheets of brrr, and it was just. And, you know, I started video games when there was no contract with SAG. Right. So that's how long ago it was. Yeah. So I, I remember. nobody thought it would be a thing. Right, right, right. <laughs> So I remember the really abusive, you know, not abusive. That's the wrong word. It's just abusive to the vocal cords. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I remember those sessions. But those, in my purview, were gone a, a long time ago. Yeah, I, I yeah. know they still happen. 
and they just shouldn't. Well, it's just an interesting thing. I mean, I have been, even in these, these sessions that I'm in now, they are very super respectful. And they are two hour sessions and there's always a break and there's always a, you all right? You need to, you need to, another break? Do you need some more right. tea? Do you need, right. what do you need? Right. You know, right. very aware and very. Well, that's yeah. good. Yeah. And that's all Great. you can do. And, and I always tell actors who ask me, you have got to speak up. Right. You have got to not be afraid and you have got to speak up and say, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. It, it hurts. Yeah. Because someone on the other side of the glass is probably going to press for as much as they can get. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yes. It's like. Time is money. Yeah. So. We um, got stuff to get recorded. Yeah. Yeah. You do sure. have to just speak up and take care of yourself. When the strike was happening last year and there were lots of talks that I was involved in about how do we delineate what's vocally stressful and what's not vocally stressful. And, and I said, you know. That's next to impossible because what someone like Fred Tatashore can do oh my goodness. versus what Kay Best can do is way vastly different, you know? Mm -hmm. So you can't put a meter on it, right. really, right? Or, yeah. or some sort of measurement on it. And that was the tricky part, I think, about those negotiations. So they came up with the two hour and, you know, yeah. we'll see how that goes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because... You can scream for two hours and blow out your voice. I you mean, absolutely you, you can. can. You absolutely can. Uh, what I learned, what I have, am learning from this is I haven't really had to be super diligent about learning how to care for my voice because I mm -hmm. haven't had sessions like this. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, it just, for me, it brought to mind like, you have to figure out what your recovery is. Yeah. And you must do that. Yeah. Or you will not be long for this yeah. work. Yeah. And so it is incumbent upon the actors to have a protocol that they engage to, that yes. they know and understand. I mean, I started taking singing lessons again to learn how to breathe, you know. And so it's all of that kind of stuff, too. Like you do whatever you must do right. to right. keep your vocal cords in good health. Right. And, you know. Well, and not only that, <clears throat> but ask questions ahead of time. So if you've been booked for a tour session that is vocally stressful, ask to see the script ahead of time so that you can understand how many lines they're looking for. Right. Number one, you are afforded that now after those right. negotiations. Right. Um, number two, this is the way I look at it, and, and I have a lot of friends who are actors who might not agree with me, but if you've been booked on a two-hour vocally stressful session at the rate, which is a yes. scale rate, which yes. is a four-hour session, right. It is my opinion that you should not be running to another session, that you should yeah. afford yourself at minimum those two hours that you would have been in that session sure. four years ago to heal and then go to another session if you can. If you can't do that, then really work with your agent to let your agent know, Schedule you know, stuff. I yeah. I, uh, I need to really do these from four to six so that I have the whole evening to heal. You right. know, once you go to one and you know there are multiple ones for any given game, then you go, okay, oh boy, all right. Well, I'm going to have yeah. to do these from four to six Thursdays or Fridays if possible. Right. And maybe that's not your deal. Maybe it is that you need to take the whole day off. Maybe it's that you don't do them anymore. Right. Um, and that is your prerogative. Yeah. Voice acting in video games will have some vocally stressful moments. Yep. If you don't like it, don't audition for video games. Right. Uh, it's, I, yeah. it's blunt, but I'm sorry. There's nothing it's I can do about it. It's the reality of it. I mean, it's just what it is. Yeah. That's, There's nothing I can do about it's it. It's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you don't have battle chatter lines, then I'm at least going to let you on fire. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Today I died a thousand deaths. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's just part of the gig. And administer your own career. Administer your own health. Take responsibility for yourself in the booth and let the director know. Yeah. Um, if you're on a game with a lot of – if you're on several games with a lot of vocally stressful stuff, you know, make sure that your agent is aware to book those out, you know, with days in between them. Right. So you're not back-to-back. -back. You know, on this game, it's really interesting. There are two of us in the booth uh, at the same time. Oh, cool. And we're alternating, oh, at, wow. which is a really interesting mm -hmm. way of getting a lot done Yeah. while having it be, you know, 50% less stressful. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Right. One actor does a pass of the lines. The second actor takes a pass of the very same lines. Oh, I, you know, interesting. Yeah, but there, are, you know, it's you know, I I don't know if it's just sort of this particular game that that works, but it's fascinating to me. It seems to be very effective because in a two or a four hour period of time, they're getting two sets. It's a really great idea. Yeah. Then I might steal. Yeah. <laughs> Hope I didn't just give away a trade secret. But. You didn't. You didn't. <clears throat> but it's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's. Um, for me, it really afforded, because the person that I'm working with is like a seasoned video game person. Oh, it's like okay. many, 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 many more games and has done this kind of work uh -huh. much more frequently. So uh -huh. I feel like, oh, I am so lucky that I get to actually right. watch this person work and go, okay, I got it. Right. And then I'm good. But do you find it intimidating that, like, you don't want to deliver the lines in the same cadence that said other person? You know what? Did? I am. Or no. I am feel I have enough confidence in my acting ability and that I am who I am. And yeah. And I'm not. Yeah. I don't feel that way. No. Yeah. I think I, I think, in fact, I, it's, it, it's a little bit of play f for me in that regard. Yeah. Because I go, oh, that's an interesting Take that's an interesting it. take. Uh -huh. I'm going to do something different. Uh -huh. You know, that's what it feels like to me. So it's, yeah. it's just the method in which I see this person doing the right. work right. Uh, is like, okay, that's how that's done. Right. You know? Right. Um, so it's been a fantastic education f for me. Yeah. You know? Oh, and it sounds uh, really neat. Yeah. It's been pretty cool. Cool. What else do I want to ask you before we start to play um, Beehive Roulette? What do I want to ask you? Do you know? <laughs> I don't know. What is Let's it? Let's see. Let me see. Let me see. Did you know, here's the thing. Okay. Here's a question I generally ask voice actors. Uh, you know, well, I ask everybody who comes in here, voice actor, casting director, agent, what have you. <laughs> um, this podcast has sort of taken on a, a personality of its own, I yeah. think. And yeah. uh, I ask women, what's been the most difficult part of your career. Hmm. You know, for actors, I have to say, it's it's quite often, what do you do when work isn't coming? And you're mm. terrified about not being able to put a roof over your kid's head and yeah. food on the table. And yeah. kind of that terror of, am I done? Am I finished? Is my career over? What do I do? How do yeah. I reinvent? What do I, you know, things were going so well, now they're not. Right. So uh, like a pivotal moment where you just had to rethink, reevaluate, recreate. Um, you know, I, the most difficult part of my career, I would say, is the juggling. Because, you know, again, knock on wood, I, I have been afforded very steady work for quite some time. Fingers crossed that that will continue. <laughs> I find it difficult to juggle family life and my work. Yeah. You know, mom's are the bookkeepers for everybody, yeah, right? Everybody. So, you know. Yeah. And and so that 9 to 6, I've got clients breathing over me all the time. Yeah. And I've got an actor looking at me going, "What am I doing?" Uh, and I've got an engineer going, "Are you are you okay?" And I got to make a doctor's appointment for my kid and so and so's got to, you know, I mean, I have to make doctor's appointments for myself. That is the hardest struggle for me yeah. is just making sure that my life is balanced. Yeah. And I think that's everyone's struggle, yeah. quite frankly. Yeah. So it's not special to me. But I think but because... But it's real. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's real because I think my kids think, well, Michael and their stepdad can get off work and take us to the ortho. And, and I have to say to them, I can't get off work. I have to take the whole day off to right, do that or right. take the morning off. And then that really may mess the client's schedule up because they've flown in from Japan for this, right. you know. Oh goodness, yeah. uh, I think I've only taken two sick days to where I had to call panicking to other directors at night going, are you by any chance free? And I can't duck, but here's what the situation is. Oh, my gosh. Because yeah. we can't call in sick. Right. Because it's we're the ones embedded in the project and right. we're the ones the client has vetted. And so that's that's the hardest part, I would say. And for that, I probably will get out of it at some point in time. I probably will want to clock in and clock out 
at yeah. some point yeah. and just be able to go to the five o'clock soccer game, but still put in a full day's worth of work. Right. Do you know what I'm yes, saying? I do. Uh, yeah. And I, that's something that's not afforded to me. Now I want to be very clear because I'm being recorded that I'm not like, wah, wah, you know, oh, like no. I feel you know, very I, blessed yes, that I, don't... I get to do what I do. It, yeah. If any actor ever heard me say, I always say it beats paving roads. I mean, <laughs> I just can't yeah. complain. Yeah. But if you're to ask me, that's my one thing that I go, I, yeah. I just want to, you know, take my kid to a doctor's appointment when they're sick and I can't. Yeah. But, you know. I think every job, I know for myself, I have been working voiceover for a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, there's already come a day where I, I look at some stuff and I go, I don't want to do that. Like, I finally am at this place where I go, yeah, I'm going to say no. Yeah. And I think new people to voiceover, if you've only been in it for a decade, it's like, what? Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to say no. What do your agents say? Well, my, actually, the ag my agents aren't the boss of me. Right. <laughs> and right. This, this sort of realization that they aren't, I think we spend a lot of time thinking that they are. And in yeah. fact, we're not. We just need to let them know who we are and what it is we're willing and what we want to do. And yeah. that when we choose to do something that we are fully committed to it. Yeah. You know? And I struggle with that, too. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I have been brought f a few games where I've been like, I don't know if I like the premise. It's rather dark. What yeah. is it? What does it, you know, do? Is this, is this me? Am I going to be able to artistically represent yes, this game? Right. Because I really don't identify with it or it's sort of on the border of mm, not something I want to put my name on. Right. You know, so right. I've had to look at that a, a couple of times, but, you know, I'm realistic and going, well, I am a video game voice director so yeah, if I have a problem with blood I'm in the wrong yeah, game industry yes, exactly yeah. I mean for me that kind of stuff it's more like I look at stuff that I actually <laughs> here I am saying these things on mic too you know I some stuff and it's not not I'm not even referring to video games because yeah. I find video games to be so fascinating and everything that I'm sent is like my agents are very good about sending me things that are really right for me so I do find them interesting and the story is interesting I really mean I look at something and I go I think I would die of boredom if I had to do that. Right. You know, right. And that might be a big, long medical narration thing. Where right. It's like, yeah, text oh, my God, I, I, I can't do it. You <laughs> yeah. know, yeah. it's really that, yeah. you know, more than anything, uh -huh. because it, I can't do something for a long period of time that has absolutely no color in it. There's no there's nothing sort of creative in it. Yeah. That, that feeds my my actor yeah. Jones, my yeah. creative Jones, what, whatever it might be. So it's exactly. really it's that kind of thing, yeah. you know. But I think we all do stuff. Well, yeah, I'll be, I'll be on a game, <clears throat> you know, i.e. some sort of combat-driven yeah. game yeah. where I'll do the same combat lines with Soldier 1 through Soldier 8 for four weeks in a row right. and I want to go Poof. yeah but at the end of the day each actor brings a different color yeah to the same lines yeah I'm not gonna lie that it won't it gets mundane after a while sure but uh, you know every day is new every four hours is new for yeah. me and yes. that's another part of my job that I love is like you know not only do I change clients on a weekly or monthly basis it can be a revolving door, two hour, two hour, two hour. And my favorite days are eight hour days, eight actors. Like, I love it. That's it's crazy, but I love the just, yeah, let's get them in. Let's do these lines. Great. How are you? How are the kids? Fantastic. I got to, you have to sign your paperwork out there because yeah. I got to keep going. Yeah. I just, I'm a very, you know, yeah. do, do, do kind of person. And so those days are the most fun to me. Yeah. And plus I get to play with eight different amazingly talented actors yeah which is so much fun yeah 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 that's that's fantastic yeah. all right we're gonna play beehive roulette okay this so here's the deal so i have my beautiful roulette wheel okay clicky do I, click where do i put on red and black red and black what? like in vegas oh sorry <laughs> whoops see how often i play true roulette maybe i will i'm going to vegas at the end of june oh you should it's maybe so I, fun maybe i will yeah split the zeros to split the zero. Okay, I will have to figure out what that means. You'll go to the you'll go to the lady at the or the the person operating yeah. the roulette and say, "What's the minimum?" And they're going to say ten or twenty dollars or whatever. Yeah. And then the zeros are at the top of the 
whatever they call wheel? it. Well, it's not the wheel. wheel. There's a, a wheel and then there's the board with okay. all the numbers, right? Okay. And you put your chips on the board. And the zeros are, there's a zero and there's a double zero because there's a zero and a double zero on the roulette uh, wheel. And if you split the zeros, the zeros are the biggest payouts. Okay. So if you split the zeros, if it hits the double zeros or the zero, you got like massive payload. Okay. Yeah. Split the zeros. Split the zeros. Right. That is the tip of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda Wyatt. Okay, so here's the zero. Here's what we do. Okay, you're gonna spin this wheel. Okay, and you're gonna spin it ten times. Okay. And a- after each spin, it'll stop on a little slice of the wheel. Okay, and you pick a number, any one of the numbers. There are four numbers, t- three three to four numbers in each little piece of the pie. Okay, and whatever number correlates, it'll correlate to a question that I have here, and I'm gonna ask you the question. Okay, and it's gonna be like quickie. Ten times. Ten times. So give it a good spin. That's not a good spin. Okay. Come oh, on. Geez, geez. Let's go. Okay. There. there we go. Ooh, I love the sound. I, know, I feel like I'm an sound. NPR right now. Do so you need a number? Yeah. That's easy. 27. I'm slowly but surely probably going to reveal my roulette numbers to you. Oh, I better write this My down. real Vegas roulette numbers. Wow. Wow, this is a really good question. Th- most of these are like, so superficial, but here's one. Okay. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? My voice, 110%. Your voice is great. I hate it. Aww. And I'm sorry to all the actors who have to hear it. Oh, you all uh, day long. have no idea. You have, a, you have a lovely voice. Don't worry about that anymore. Thanks. All right. But no, my voice. <laughs> all right, spin. Don't write this down for Vegas. <laughs> 33. What's your favorite type of food? Sushi. Really? Yeah, 100%. Could you eat that every day? Uh, Not Three every day. Week? Yeah, because I'd be like worried about mercury. Yeah. But. <laughs> Tapeworms and s- s- no, stuff? No, mercury, mercury. <laughs> and I'd be worried about my pocketbook. Yeah, right, uh, exactly. But sushi. Yeah. Okay, sushi. Wow. Yeah, right love on. it, love okay. it, love it. Okay. Here's number three. Here we go. Good sushi. Yes. Yes. I like sushi twice a year. Really? Yeah. Oh, twice a week at least. Eleven. Would you skydive? No way. No effing way is what that sounds like. That's what it is. <laughs> Most actors know that have worked with me. I'm not a, even a good flyer. Yeah. Very we well. could talk about flying. Yeah. Okay, that was four. Twenty-five. Who is your loudest friend? Rosa Graziano. Boom. Have you met her? No. Oh, it's like <laughs> I would know immediately. <laughs> yeah, she is my friend that I met. One of my dearest, closest friends that I met whilst in acting class. Mm. And she would kill me if I ended it there. She has been with me through divorce and children and deaths, and she is. Everyone needs Rosa in their lives. And most actors have run across her. She's amazing. She lives here in LA. She's Jersey, uh, born and raised in um, Palisades Park, New Jersey. Yeah, she's my Oprah. That is fantastic. Mm-hmm. What a lovely scene. See, you know, everybody thinks that who's your loudest friend means that they drive you insane. That That's not necessarily no. true. No. It's just a quality of so they're loud. Yeah. Great friend, yeah. loud. She's amazing. But yeah. She's amazing. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Rosa Graziano. Rosa Graziano. What a great name. I know, right? She needs a show. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Five. Five? Oh, this is good for you. What's your favorite kitchen tool? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that like, <laughs> you're like, what? did I give you the impression that I like to cook? I know. Well, we talk about <laughs> cooking a lot. I know. Yeah. Uh, kitchen tool, kitchen tool, kitchen tool. I would have to say that's so weird. I like panini press. Wow, that's really impressive. I don't have a panini press. You don't? No. Oh, panini presses. I do love bomb. panini yeah. sandwiches. Yeah. I do like me a panini press, especially in the fall and the winter when you just want to put some soup on and make a little grilled, grilled cheese. cheese, like on a brioche. Listen to you. Fancy apricot jam. That yeah. is awesome. Yeah. See, you do cook. Yeah. You're I a do. foodie. Oh, yeah. All right. Here's number six. Okay. That was a fancy kitchen tool. I'm like, a knife. Oh, 
<laughs> I was going to say knife, but then I was like, what does that say about me? <laughs> I keep getting this thing. Yeah. I need to write these numbers down for yeah. Vegas. 39. Summer, winter, spring, or fall? Oh, my God. Fall. Fall 100%. Yeah. But I will say that we don't have fall here. Yeah. So you have to walk the aisle eight of Michael's to really uh, – <laughs> Feel fall foliage, yeah. But, or it's uh, like two days mid November. I mean, mid no, it's it. It, and it's way late. Yeah, there's that street in Pasadena. Yes. Um, oh god, I forget which one it is, but it's like lined with beautiful maple trees, liquid amber. Are they? Yeah, yeah the ones uh, that just turn and have the balls on yes, them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. liquid amber. Um, Those are fantastic yeah. trees. But fall. Yeah. All right. When I finally move to the East Coast, I'll be really happy. That's great. All right, here's number seven. Okay. This is enormous roulette wall. Isn't it? It's yeah. huge. It's ridiculous. 28. Who was the last person you talked to on the phone? Today. Uh-huh. Oh. Well, I, yeah, the last person. Michael Pedriana, my adorable husband. <laughs> Fantastic. 20. What's your middle name? Dawn. Dawn. Amanda Dawn. Yeah. What's I'm not gonna that sing flower along. you have yeah. on? Mm -hmm. All right. Two more. Here's okay. number eight. That is a lovely name, though. Thank you. 41. What book are you reading? Assuming you're reading uh, a book. Oh, God. Well, I really wish I could get back to it. The Handmaid's <gasps> Tale. Okay. I'm like three quarters of the way, and then I got waylaid. I didn't now, read the book, but I'm watching the series. I'm not watching the series. <sighs> And I want to read Until the book before the book? I go. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I should read the book. I should read the book. I'm three quarters of the way through, and I'm like, dang it, I got to finish it. I and back. I just have been really. It's an amazing busy. series. I know. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. I have great. a feeling it'll be one that my husband won't be into that. All right. I think this is 10. 10. Is this 10? I think so. Right. Yeah. Nine. Are you cynical? No. Would you say that I'm cynical? No. I wouldn't say you're cynical. I don't get that from you at all. No, I don't feel that way. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I have some pretty amazing people in my life that are very close to me that are. Yeah. And I don't see it as a negative. I just, um, I'm not. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. not either. I have days when I am. Yeah. You know, but, sure. but by and large, I'm not. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I would say me too. Yeah. But um, I think uh, I really try to think the best of people yeah. and the best of circumstances. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, there. Yeah, I have dates. My husband jokes with me about sometimes he'll see me in the morning and say, how's your day? Because he's one of those guys that like wakes up and like everything's chipper. And I'm like, <laughs> oh. I remember we were dating and he was like, the birds are chirping, the sun is shining. And I'm like, really? Are you for real? I have not had a coffee yet. Yeah. That's um, just, that's just lack of coffee. That's, that's not normal. Really that's not, yeah. That's, yeah. But he'll come to me and how, how's your day? And it's like eight. So I don't know. And my answer is, jury's out. Yeah. I don't know Has yet. Begun. Like, the Nespresso ever. machine needs to be turned exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then, I'm, then I can talk to you and I'm, then it's rose colored glasses, but. Before yeah. that, my eyes are just closed and I can't, I can't tell. No, I know. Okay. I have one last question for you. Okay. If heaven exists, mm. what would you like to hear God say to you when you arrive at the pearly gates? Oh, that's a tough one, Kay. <laughs> heaven exists. <Wah. laughs> what? And why am I like crying? Um, I do that. I make people cry. You do? I do. Yeah. It's the wine. It's the wine I serve. <laughs> yeah, it's usually a Saturday guest that cries. Um, <laughs> um, uh, what would I... Oh, God. I think I would... What would I like? Yeah. What would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Oh, goodness. Um, you did a good job with your kids. See? You're like... I know. <laughs> That is a fantastic answer. Yeah. Amanda Wyatt, thank Aww. you so much for coming to thank the Beehive. Thank you. I know we... Thank you. It was fun. It's, yeah. It's it was really fun. Just... I feel like I'm on like an Ira Glass thing. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> it's been great to have you. Thank so. you. Thank, thank you, you for having me. Yes. Thank you. Pleasure. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> oh, you made me cry. Thanks for joining me today in the Beehive. 
For podcast notes, pictures, and more information on my guests, visit the podcast website, thebeehivepodcast.com. Find me at my website, kbest.com. Follow me on Twitter at kbest and subscribe to my channel on YouTube. If you've a mind to, please post a review of the podcast on iTunes. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and good for the bones. Come back for more Women in VoiceOver next time in the Beehive. Let's